Hey, Times Radio spoke to the Equalities Minister Kemi Badenoch and uh, she told us that students should learn the benefits from the British Empire. There were terrible things that happened during the British Empire. There were other good things that happened and we need to tell both sides of the story. And what I find uh, comparing the way we talk about the British Empire now versus how I learned about it in Nigeria. In Nigeria, it was actually a very nuanced description that here are the good things that happened. Here were these missionaries, these are the things they did, and here are some of the terrible things that happened. There wasn't any sort of attempt to describe British Empire as, look at this really awful, terrible thing that oppressed and and victimized us. Uh, And I think my upbringing and schooling in another country has really influenced the way that I look at these things. Let's speak to Times columnist and author of Empire Land, How Imperialism Has Shaped Modern Britain, Satnam Singera. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, uh, I think you like a bit of nuance, don't you? (laughs) I think nuance is something to aim for when it comes to understanding history. But balance, which is what Kemi is talking about here, is actually quite dangerous. I mean, are you going to talk about the positives and negatives of Nazi Germany? Are you going to talk about the positives and negatives of the Great Potato Famine, or in 20 years' time, the bombing of Mariupol, you know? The problem with this country, the reason we're so screwed up about empire is that we always see it through the balance sheet view. You know, we always try to balance the fact that we might have introduced railways to India with, you know, the genocide of the Tasmanians. And it's offensive to the people died. It's also historically illiterate. You know, what we need to do is to understand history, not always try to give it a five-star rating like it's a book you bought on Amazon. Is the problem that something like empire is uh, is so contentious um, that it depends who's doing the teaching or who's doing the talking in that that it's not you're not able to be objective about something like this in the first place? So is that where the problem starts? I would say that's a that's a major challenge. I mean, Kemi says we need to be, you know, teach the positive and negatives. But who decides what is positive and negative? Look at Barbados, you know, on, on one level. What happened there was just amazing and marvelous thing. You know, we created this rich colony. We created, you know, the biggest sugar plantation colony in the world in the 17th century. But what about the views of the 600,000 African slaves who were sent there across the Atlantic to work? I guess they weren't so positive about it. So who gets to decide what was good and bad mm-hmm. is also another problem with the government's plans to be balanced. Now, obviously, we're talking about how it should be taught in the future. I, I wonder, I, I know that on social media, you interact daily uh, with people who have uh, views on empire. Do you think uh, that you've managed to change anyone's mind? Or do you think that people have pretty entrenched views on, on this kind of stuff? I absolutely feel that younger people and history teachers and academics are changing their minds and are open-minded. Also, they care a lot about this subject. There's a survey done by YouGov recently, which found that 78% of British people think it's a good idea to teach kids about colonialism and slavery. The problem is, at the same time, there's been a massive culture war, you know, uh, pioneered by this government, you know, on the subject of empire, you know, um, whether it's uh, trolling the National Trust for daring to explore imperial history or Oliver Dowden threatened to withdraw funding from museums who engage with the woke. This government have been making it into an issue, you know? And so it's hard with those two polar opposites to to find a middle way. Mm. Um, Something that feeds into a lot of this is the uh, royal family, William and Kate, receiving a lot of backlash on on their tour of of the Caribbean. What what have you made of the debate? Um, And also just some some of the images of that particular visit. Well, I think the royal family were, there's no getting over it, heavily involved with slavery. You know, um, it was the Royal African Company who, you know, pioneered pioneered the transatlantic slave trade. And I've just been reading about Barbados. Uh, the slaves there often were branded with the Duke of York's, you know, logo when they arrived on the island. And I don't think the royal family have ever faced up to their involvement. And I think that makes it awkward when they arrive, as they have done, you know, on modern royal visits. What about people who say this was a long time ago and we need to live in the present well it wasn't actually that long ago was it i mean we abolished slavery a lot in the 19th century but then the effects of it were felt for hundreds of years and i think if you look at the caribbean there's all sorts of problems you can you can point and point to them and say they they are because of slavery you know single parents the lack of 
health development, you know, hospitals, a lack of investment in schooling. That was because, yes, we abolished slavery, but then we didn't give them any money. We actually compensated the slave owners rather than giving these countries the money they needed to become proper functional states. Mm. It's a really interesting, um, well, it's an interesting subject, as, as you found out. That is um, Satnam Singeri, he's a Times columnist and author of the book Empire Land, How Imperialism Has Shaped Modern Britain. And he's written about um, uh, history and how it should be taught in the wake of uh, those comments by uh, Kemi Badenoch on Times Radio. It's in Times 2 today, so have a look at that. Mm-hmm.